Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Coach Me Plus. Coach Me Plus is the leader in athlete management software and a product that we've been lucky enough to implement here for over two years now. The product in and of itself is exactly what you need it to be, guys, with options ranging from being a workout provider, as in sending the workout directly to the student athlete's phones, to being a place where you can communicate with them and bring together multiple streams of data to be its own dashboard for you, your coaching staff, or the athletes. Or you can use what we've added to our our menu of Coach Me Plus activities, and that's Hydration Station, where all of this information that is provided is based off of research from the Corey Stringer Institute, where we're looking at weighing in versus weighing out and then providing optimal hydration uh, strategies for the student athletes by them selecting through the menu and tapping on what they'll take home with them and what they're consuming prior to the next practice um, when all the numbers at the top are lined up green. It's something we've had really good success with and the kids have really bought in on. Just another great example of the awesome product that you can find at coachmeplus.com. Guys, hop over to coachmeplus.com today and check it out. It's a product I guarantee you won't be disappointed with. Hey everybody, if you enjoy the podcast and the content it provides, be sure to hop over and check out the community. The community is an exclusive members website that is just an extension of what we do here in July at the Central Virginia Sport Performance Seminar. What it is is a combination of video lectures, a coach's corner with your Monday morning take-home information, and a forum where you can talk about anything and everything related to the field of strength and conditioning. In the community, you'll find content added each month from some of the top practitioners in the world ranging from PhDs to high-level coaches, bringing you exactly what they're doing with their athletes or their research at the present moment. On top of that, an additional discussion by coaches bringing you that Monday morning information, things that you can add to your training program right away. Tying that in with the opportunity to discuss with coaches around the world in the forum on anything and everything from the topics addressed in these presentations to whatever you're seeing in your daily life as a coach. If this sounds like the right thing for you and your staff, Go ahead and hop over to cvasps.com slash community and try it out for 48 hours for just a dollar. If you like it, you're signed up, ready to roll, and you're jumping into all the great content added each month. If not, feel free to go ahead and cancel at any time. No questions asked. We're really excited about what we're building in the community and hope you are too. Go ahead and hop over to cvasps.com slash community and check it out today. Hello. And welcome to the podcast. Today, guys, we have an absolutely fantastic discussion with Elite FTS's Nate Harvey talking about everything training and the state of the profession we're in. Nate's going to start out, guys, talking about how he got into training at a young age and how Elite FTS has impacted him along the way, both as an athlete and a coach, and now how uh, how he's contributing back through Elite FTS. We then discuss, you know, the learning experiences he's had as a coach and really the, the power and importance of asking questions and why we need to be more adept to doing that. You know, this leads him right into what he has been contributing education-wise uh, when it comes to the work he's doing with Elite now. And then we finish off discussing some different issues that Nate sees with the industry right now and even talking about some ways that we can better things and, and move forward in a positive direction. This is a really awesome talk, guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let's get right to it. Nate, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today, man. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate you uh, having me on. Yeah, so listen, dude, for like the person and a half listening right now who doesn't know who Nate Harvey is, let's give them the, the quick little Spark Notes, Cliff Notes version of, of who you are, where you're at, and what you've been getting into. Okay. Um, I got. We can start. I'll, I'll give you the long story. Um, <laughs> I started training when I was 12, almost 40 now. Um And I kind of knew my, when I was like 14 or so, my dad could kind of see that I was really getting into this stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, He's like, you know, there's people that that teach people how to lift weights and like work with athletes and uh, they're strength coaches and it's a, it's a profession. You know what I mean? So it was almost like when I was 14, I kind of knew like I wanted to coach and kind of be in this business and, and be in this arena, you know? So it was like uh, all through high school. That's kind of I, I knew what I wanted to do, you know. What I, I think is kind of rare, you know. Um, but that's 
kind of where this whole thing started. Um, fast forward, you know, going through high school, did the, the typical stuff we all do, looking at all the magazines, you know, trying all the different programs, you know, Flex Magazine. I had, <laughs> I had this weight room upstairs in my parents' house. Um, I got in 10th grade, we got an Olympic set. And there, you know, there's like the pictures of Flex Magazine guy, Dorian Yates, you know, Flex Wheeler all, all over the walls and stuff, you know. Um, so training all through high school and then uh, and then college, I went to a D3 school. So we really didn't have a strength coach. It was um, the program we did was like the same program our head coach did when he played there like 10 years ago type thing. So <laughs> being a typical 19 year old kid, I, of course, knew better than everybody. Um, and continued to kind of look for what, what was the best program type thing. You know what I mean? So still always trying new stuff. Um, and it wasn't until it was like my senior year before my senior year, I kind of stumbled onto, uh, one of Dave's articles, um, periodization Bible part two, which kind of started on the conjugate stuff and he, he broke it down. And I remember reading it. And it just everything made sense to me, you know, and I had tried everything before that. So hopped on that program um, before my senior year um, and my senior year went real well, um, not only from a playing standpoint, but just feeling good um, before and through and even after the season. Um, you know, I went and tested my strength after the season and everything was right about almost where it was right before the season. So I was like, man, I felt really good this year, and my strength is almost where it was right before season. Like, this thing's kind of – there's got to be something to this, you know? Mm-hmm. Or before, like anybody that's played football, they know you go into train soon after season, and 135 feels like four or 500 on the bar. You know what I mean? So, so the fact that I didn't get smashed when I went into test after season was – really really had me intrigued um so continue to kind of follow that stuff and follow the whole strength coaching thing um got out of my undergrad uh was working on that uh took a little break from school got an internship you know did the whole thing uh had to get out for a little bit and then my wife and i a few years later we ended up moving back to buffalo um Cause I had been out and I was like, if I'm going to get in this, if I'm going to coach, I need a master's degree, you know, and where we were at, that was just geologically wasn't an option. So we came up to Buffalo and I was like, I'm going to work on my, my graduate degree. Um, try to make some contacts, try to get in somewhere. Cause there wasn't any, any options where I was at. So that was around 06 or 07. Um, and I was lucky enough to, start volunteering volunteering at UV. Um, Julia Laduski actually let me come in and start doing some stuff, you know? Um, so that was kind of the start of that. And then, so it was like, like a year later at the end of my grad program, I was set to start uh, interning under Cheyenne Petrie, who was there at the time, which was pretty cool because I had been reading Elite for probably... 10 years at this, no, 15 years or so at this point, you know, so I knew who he was. I knew who Julia was. I kind of knew a lot of the contributors they had and, you know, the stuff that was on there obviously um, was a big influence on me. So I was set to start interning with him, which I was pretty pumped about. You know, I, we had moved to Buffalo. I got, I was ready to get my graduate degree about to start an internship under somebody I knew and, you know, had heard of. And so and like a week before I was supposed to start, he uh, took a job in private sector. So everything was kind of up in the air for, for a little bit, uh, a couple of weeks. So um, started my final internship and we didn't, we didn't have a director at the time. So there was a couple of weeks. It was just, you know, the assistants and me kind of running things and helping out. Um, and then a couple of weeks into it, uh, Buddy Morris got the job. So being a longtime reader of elite and then having buddy come in, it was, you know, it was, I went from kind of panic to what am I going to do to this is perfect, you know? So when that was around Oh seven, um, so I did internship under him. Um, and then I continued to volunteer for 
the rest of the year. So it was another six months or whatever. I just came in whenever I could, would help out wherever I could. Um, and then Buddy actually offered me a job. But a couple of weeks before I was supposed to start the job, he went to pit. <laughs> so it was kind of the same thing again. Um, but it ended up working out. Um, you know, they brought me on. I was there for – we also had uh, Paul Childress there at the time who – so we had three three contributors of Elite who I had been reading and following for, you know, the past few years who I was now able to work with. So that was – it was really cool. Um, so then I uh, stayed at Buffalo for about 10 years. Uh, I was the head guy of Olympic sports the last four years I was there. Um, we had a lot of success, had a lot of good kids. Um, and then, uh, that ended and then I've been with elite for almost a year now, uh, working for them. Um, but I was spot, I've been sponsored or on the, on the coaches board for a year and a half now. So it's pretty cool. I, I talk about this a little bit when I go and do uh, clinics and stuff, you know, probably one of the, the top five big reasons I was able to achieve that goal and become a coach was one of the more like the top five reasons was the information and the people I met through elite. So to kind of come around full circle and, and be on board, you know, with them now is, is very cool and uh, it's going well. I'm, I'm happy to be where I'm at. So that's the long ass story of how I got here and what I'm doing. <laughs> that's freaking awesome though, man. And, and I think that the thing that really, kind of hits home with me um one being an upstate new york guy um you actually know why buddy hates buffalo so much <laughs> and two um i think that that kind of footprint whether he understands how big it encompasses or not uh that dave has <coughs> in our profession from people who like I mean, I've only spent a couple days with them, like me, you know, but have read the coach's log since it was, you know, X and 62 and H, you know, from back in the day when, when Tom's thesis was put up there and it was like, all of a sudden we're looking at all of these things completely differently to, to now is really spectacular. Cause you know, you, you listen, you list names like Childress and, and Julia and, you know, obviously Buddy and Cheyenne and it's just like that's like a who's who of coaches that when I was starting I got were people that I wanted to emulate yeah and it's really yeah, it, it's really it, fascinating yeah it's it, it's and part of the like part of the reason I <clears throat> I reached I originally um reached out to Goodwin when I got on board with Elite uh, I originally reached out to Matt Goodwin um, with kind of a business question. Um, I was kind of starting to think about maybe putting a book together and, you know, I had, I kind of knew the name I wanted to go with conjugate you and stuff. And so I just emailed him. I'm like, um, Hey, what do you guys do for like trademarking? Cause I was thinking about trademarking it or whatever, you know? And, uh, and he emailed me back and said, Hey, Dave's going to call you in about an hour. So that was kind of my first contact um, with them and starting to kind of get on board. Um, and it's funny you say like the impact and footprint, um, you know, Dave, Dave mentioned that we kind of been looking at you for a little bit, but we, you know, we really don't know what you want to do or what plans you had for the site or whatever. Um, but it was, it was interesting to, Part, I'd always, like you talked about emulating the coaches and stuff. I kind of got off track a little bit there. Um, I was like, yeah, I would, I would love to contribute to, to Elite, but, like, what can I offer? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then I got to thinking, like you mentioned the names that I mentioned and stuff. I'm like, if I can take 40, 50% of what I've learned from all these really great people that I've been lucky enough to be around and kind of spread that information out, that's going to help a lot of people. You know what I mean? So you mentioned like the footprint it has and the effect, you know, that was kind of the thing that clicked for me. It was like, if I can get just a little bit of this information out, 
it's going to be, it's going to help a, a ton of people, you know, and being on the phone with Dave and he, he spent like an hour and a half with me talking about business and all sorts of, you know, just out of the blue, you know, so it was pretty cool that you, that you bring that up. Yeah. Cause dude, it, it, I had a, the freaking luck to be able to sit down and have him on our show. And we talked for like 40 minutes after about like, what are you trying to do with all this? Where do you see this going? What are you trying to do? And like things that he's seen and like ways that he's moving and how he like, I mean, dude, like this is Dave Tate. Like to me, there are very few people in the strength and conditioning world who are above Dave Tate when it comes to like impact on what we do. And he's like, I take two hours a day or an hour a day and I answer every single question I get on Instagram. Yeah. I'm just like, do you know how many questions this poor guy probably has? And like 99.99% of them were probably searchable in the Q and a. Right. You know? And I'm just like, and if he's going to take time to do this and he, He's done more for this field than I could ever, like, even think about even coming remotely close to. Like, who am I to, to not try to give more and try to be better for other people, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if he can find time to do it, you know. And it's <clears throat> it's funny you bring that up, like, just being on social media more and trying, trying to get our the word out about us a little more, like, if I wanted to, I could sit on my phone all day, you know, and I'm like, and it's, I'm not even close to what the amount of messages Dave has and stuff. You know what I mean? So I can only imagine how many freaking questions and stuff you have to go through to get through everybody. Oh yeah. But I'm saying even at the like kind of small step I'm at, like if I wanted to, I could sit on my phone and answer questions most of the day and kill a few hours, you know? So it's, now, it's, it's pretty cool that they do that, you know, but you, but somebody did it for him. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. when I was interning at Buffalo, I'm sure I annoyed the piss out of those guys some days, just question after question, but you know, they always took time and taught me. Yeah. But I think though, Nate, what's important to, to say to that is another thing that Dave and I talked about. And that is you asked the questions, like you were the guy that like, you know, like, you went to Matt, who, if people don't know who, who Matt is, like, dude, he's, he's the best. Like, Matt's helped us out a ton. Um, but no, Nate, I think that the biggest thing with this that's really the most important part, and Dave was talking about this when he was on the show, is the fact that you ask the questions and the fact that you're willing to go find the people that you need to learn from. And, like, you've read the textbooks, so you have the understanding, and that... That's one thing that Dave really, like, he, he, he thought that was, like, the most important thing is you, you read the textbooks and you talk to the smart people to get the answers. Yeah, and it's, <clears throat> he, I think he put a video up maybe a year or so ago, um, which made me think, you know, like, I can't tell you how many interns I've had that don't ask any questions. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was talking with, with a friend about this the other day. Like, I, I just don't get it. Like I told you, like I was asking questions all the time, you know? So Dave brings up a good point. You know, if someone c- thinks you're good enough to ask you the question, you know, you should be flattered a little bit. And, you know, like he, like he's talking about, take the time to, to help him out. No doubt. Cause, cause I think, it, I think that's getting more rare. You know what I mean? There's, that and that could be maybe a maybe a problem with our industry and I'm sure I have been guilty of this too like you kind of think you know enough not know it all but know enough to get by or you know what I mean so probably the fact that someone's taking some time and getting some nuts come up and ask you a question is you know a oh, good yeah. thing no <laughs> doubt you well because one they wouldn't ask you the question if they didn't think that you had a way to answer it right and number two like now I get it. Like I've everybody at some point in time is big time somebody and been like, yeah, whatever. Like been looking past them or trying to blow it off, you know, because we all have good and bad days. But 
the fact, like you said, that they think that like you're important enough to ask a question, it, it's pretty like much like the most flattering thing they can do in a in a profession where we don't get flattered all that often. <laughs> yes. You know. Yeah, absolutely right. Take it where you can get it, right? No doubt, right? So <laughs> now that you're with Dave and, and you have this new role with Elite, let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about what you're doing and let's talk about what this different angle has, has kind of taught you as a, as a coach and a person about what we do. Um, so I'm basically like my main job is sell equipment. Um, but I'm also still contributing on the site. Um, try to keep my log pretty active. Uh, I don't, I don't write a lot. Um, one of the reasons for that is I'm very inefficient at it for me, for me, to, for me to sit down and get my brain, not so much working, but to get what's in my brain on the paper. I don't know why, but it, like it takes time to get out of the sludge and get things rolling. So <clears throat> what I've done, like I do like kind of a daily movement, quick, uh, a quick video showing a different exercise with some coaching cues. Um, I've been doing some stuff in the van where people, you know, on my way to the gym, I'll answer people's questions on video type thing. Uh, we put that up. Um, but the whole point of that is to kind of just do more outreach you know, I think, um, I don't want to say people don't know, but I think we may not be the first name people think of when they think of redoing a weight room. You know, I think a lot of people, I think the first thing they think of is our information, which is good and what is what we're based on. You know what I mean? But, mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of my role. Um, I don't know that my views on the profession have changed a lot. I think I can talk about things more because I think when you're in it, you're kind of afraid to talk about things for fear of repercussion with your job or being blackballed somewhere. You know, there's, um, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things wrong with the profession and I hate to be the person that, uh, just sits and bitches about it without a solution but I honestly have no idea how to fix it because it's so fucked up. No, you're completely right, dude. Like, we talk about that down here all the time, and that's why I started doing some of those My Thought Monday things because it's like, I think the biggest thing we need to do first and foremost is to start getting people to talk about what's wrong. Like, there's so many things that, like, and, and I guess that even more, like, kind of piggybacking back, like, whether you think something is wrong or I think something is wrong, the fact that one of us thinks something is wrong means that there is something wrong. Yes. Like, it's right. not that, oh, well, Nate Harvey, he's an asshole. He doesn't know what he's talking about. It's like, no. Like, he sees a problem. And if one person sees it, right, I mean, isn't that the dumb thing? Like, you ask the question because there's 100 people in the room. Someone else is probably thinking it. Like, we need to be able um, to fix this. Like, we need to be able to have more dialogues like like, like this yeah. to, to move things forward. Yeah, and it's, <clears throat> it's hard, too, because strength coaches are typically kind of gruff crowd, maybe seem a little disgruntled, you know, so it's very easy for the whole thing to turn into a bitching session. And if you're looking at that from the outside and don't understand it and don't deal with it, you're immediately going to tune it out because you just look like a bunch of meatheads bitching. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but there's, I mean, from the top down, it's, it's messed up. I mean, what other profession do you need to have a master's degree and two years experience to start out at twelve thousand dollars a year. None that I'm aware of. It's unheard of. Yeah. And, and then when you tell people that, they're like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? Why do you want to do that?" And it, you know, it all comes back to you want to help athletes and help service people, but everyone else is like, "What the hell are you doing?" Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so it's it's uh, you know when people talk about a union and that gets into a whole nother conversation, you know, lots of union and I'm not pro or 
anti-union, but there's a lot of abuse. You know, unions were started as a very good thing, but just like anything else, you get people abusing the system. And then people talk about, well, more strength coaches need to be in administrative positions. Well, okay, let's say, let's say you are a strength coach and you go and you get, uh, you get an admin position and you're going to oversee the strength and conditioning department. E- even if that's the case, there's a very good possibility you're going to get that spot, but you still have four other admins that are above you calling shots. So you're just a middleman and you can't make the difference that you thought you were going to make. Yeah. You know, it's almost like, it's almost like government. Somebody wants to run for president to fucking fix things and they get in the office and they find out, Oh, I really don't have the weight or the pull I thought I was going to have, you know, or, and there, there is the other side too. Maybe, maybe you do get that spot and you're at a good university where things work out and you can make a difference. But a lot of times I think you're going to get that admin spot and you're not going to have the, the pull or, you know, the power you think you're going to, to make a big difference. So it's, it's messed up. And even if you do get that admin spot, okay, great. You're overseeing your department. Things are going well, but the strength coaches you're trying to help out still may have four other bosses. They may not be their bosses on paper, but they have those four sport sport coaches who technically are their fucking bosses, right? Because they have to report to them and their opinion of them is, you know, weighs in heavily with the rest of admin. So the, like I said, the whole, there's too many moving parts. I don't know where to start to fix it. No, you're a hundred percent right. And because there are, and you know, I, I put out on my thoughts one day about that too, not too long ago. And I think the biggest problem with all of it is like, what we were talking about before is it's like there's so many different things and so many different ways that we do things and no one understands what we're trying to do. And is that our fault? You know what I mean? Like how much right. of that is our fault? Like that they don't understand that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, absolutely. Like and in our profession, we always talk about accountability, right? That's one of the big buzzwords. So sure, you know, we have to have some accountability on ourselves to help educate the staff that we work for, but it's, you can only do so much, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like you said, at at what level have I done everything I can do and is it going to make a difference one way or the other? Oh yeah. I mean like the videos that you're putting out, like the technique stuff and like you start putting things out and you're like, this is why we do it. This is what we're teaching. This is how we're teaching it. That's all great, and if you put that out there, but if you're, if the sport coaches administration don't look at it, then what are you supposed to do? Right. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's great if you have a strength and conditioning admin person there that has an idea, but, like, what if your opinion of what we're supposed to do is different than what my opinion of what we're supposed to do is? And now, all of a sudden... I've got sport coaches telling me I should do it my way. I've got my administrator telling me I should do it this way. And now, again, we're in a tug of war. Right. Yep. And I'm sure it's like this, you know, any other profession. Yeah, I'm sure they deal with this some, but it, uh, I don't know. It seems like the, and, and, and part, like, part of the problem, too, is the whole system is set up, I think, at a lot of universities, Let's say the AD is on, is backing you. He still has to keep the sport coaches happy. I think there's, I think there's very few universities where the AD is gonna kind of put the sport coach in line. I think, I think it's almost like the NFL where the, the players are getting so much power and pull that the coaches don't have a lot. I think you get the same situation in the college setting where the sport coaches have so much pull an authority that the ADs what the AD says is not doesn't have much weight you know at the end of the day he's got to keep them happy so that's another structural problem and then on top of that we have all these people telling us what to do and many of them are former athletes and probably squeak through college on a communications degree 
Mm-hmm. So that's the whole thing's upside down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and even more so, you know, I think a lot of sport coaches now kind of have the administration by the short hairs, too, because of how much they're getting paid. So they end out now being able to dictate things at a more precise, higher level than, than they probably should. Yeah. And, and that impacts everything from rules decisions to what we're allowed to do, if you may. Um, yeah, like I think there's a lot of stuff like that, that that's really wild and crazy when you, when you break it down. Yeah. yeah, I've seen, you know, situations where the AD told sport coach not to do certain things. Sport coaches did it anyway, and there was no repercussion, you know, because like you talked about, because because of the money factor, you know, but that's that's the world we're living in, and that's what we got to deal with. So, on top of dealing with all that, you got to get athletes better too. Yep. So it's <laughs> if you're able to increase performance and get those kids to do fucking fifty percent of what you originally planned, I think you're doing well. No doubt. No doubt, man. Well, Nate, I love it. This is awesome stuff. Where are people going to be able to find more? Where are they going to be able to, to, to keep up with, with what Nate Harvey's doing and putting out for people to get better every day? Um, got my coach's log on EliteFTS.com. Um, just click on the top up there under the blogs. Um, Instagram and Twitter is Nate Harvey 2600 uh, for both of those. Um, and then I also have the conjugate U one, which is conjugate underscore U, uh, for both Twitter and Instagram awesome. and then book and all the other damn things you got going on. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And if you're not in the NSCA coaches group, you, you're not seeing that Nate's putting something in there every day, a, a technique video talking about how we can teach stuff better. And it, it, it's worthwhile just for that. You know, to be in that group because it's, I, you know, I've been coaching for almost 20 years and you still look at things and you're like, ah, you know what, something I need to keep better in mind when I'm, when I'm teaching these kids. So Nate, can't thank you enough for the time today, man. And I can't thank you enough for all that you're doing to help us all get better on a daily basis, man. It, it really is appreciated. And I, I hope you know that it, it's not going unnoticed. It's really, it, it's important that, that we keep helping and I, I'm really Really thankful that we have people like you that are pushing us to get better every day, man. So thank you very much. I really appreciate that, man. We uh, all got to keep fighting the good fight, right? No doubt, brother. No doubt. <laughs> well, we'll this will be up real soon, man, and we'll be in touch with you. We, we love it, man. People are going to dig this. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, bud. And a huge thanks to Elite FTS's Nate Harvey for joining us today. Guys, I mean, what more can you ask for from the guy? I mean, He's a dude that's putting out some really awesome content, things that, you know, you need to be keeping up on because it's going to help you sort of check yourself if there's anything that you might be, you know, overlooking or whatever it may be when it comes to how you're teaching your athletes some of these exercises. So, Nate, I can't thank you enough for, for being so candid and open and honest and putting out some fantastic content to really help drive the profession forward, man. Keep up the great work, brother. It's truly appreciated. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed the talk, please share it through the social media outlet of your choice, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. Again, we're just trying to get the best information out there to all the fantastic coaches that we can. And as always, guys, thank you for everything that you do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We will be back next week with another awesome guest. We will see you then.